In today's lesson, we're going to talk about gases and how they behave. And more specifically, we're going to talk about two gas laws. So we're going to go ahead and take our two column notes. And you guys want to go ahead and set this up just like we've done in the past, two columns. And you're going to copy everything down that you see on the paper, including the pictures. You want to do at least a pretty good sketch of each of the pictures so you have those in your notes. So these are our 9-3 gas law notes. And we're going to start off with gas behavior. Well, gases behave differently than our solids and our liquids. And the gas volume changes because of two factors. Two factors include temperature and pressure. And we're going to see how those two factors do affect the behavior of our gases. Now, the first one, let's look at how temperature affects gases. We've learned that temperature is defined as how fast or slow particles move. Now, the faster particles move, the more energy there is. And of course, the slower the particles move, the less energy. So as the temperature decreases, we're going to see our particles move slower. And as the temperature increases, we see particles move faster. So let's go ahead and check that out real quick here. Um, OK, so here we have a gas. We have neon gas. And you can see what the particles are doing. Temperature's kind of fairly cool. And I'm going to cool it down even more. And we can see our temperature's dropping. Look what's happening to the behavior. As the particles are getting colder, uh, they're moving less and there's less energy now. Now, if I increase the heat on that, we're going to see the particles start to move faster and faster. And there they go. That's creating more energy. So now we can see how temperature definitely affects particle movement. And I'm continuing to add more heat, and they're starting to fly around more and more. So there's how temperature affects gases. All right, let's go back to our original notes. Now, gases in volume. Now, volume of a gas depends on the size of its container. Because we said gases will take whatever size and shape of its container. Now, you can squeeze a balloon because the particles can be compressed. Gases have a lot of space between their particles. So we can compress them pretty closely. Um, and that's going to lead us into pressure. Pressure is defined as the amount of force that's exerted on a given surface area. In sixth grade, our sixth grade definition is a little bit simpler. It's actually the number of times that particles hit the inside of a container. So the faster the particles move, the more pressure we're going to have. The slower the particles move, the less pressure we're going to have. And you can see that in this diagram here. I'm not pushing on the lid, so obviously there's not a lot of pressure. The particles are moving a little bit slower. Over here is high pressure. I'm pushing down more, and of course, the particles are moving faster. Now, if I switch over to here, we can see that. I'm going to take some gas, and I'm going to compress it into here. One, two, three, four. So I filled that up quite a bit. Let's add a little bit more. Look at all the gas particles in there. So what's going to happen is I'm going to add some heat down here. And you're going to see what happens. As I increase the heat, you're going to see the particles move faster. This is what happens with our car tire in the summertime. If we put too much air in it and it's too hot, we're going to see the pressure increase so much that our tire could explode. That's why you've got to make sure your, your tire pressure is right where it should be. So here we go. I'm going to add heat. Now notice the pressure gauge up there on the right. Look how much pressure is going. Look how fast those particles are going. And of course, there comes a point where it's going to explode. And that's what happens when there's too much, uh, uh, too much pressure. We see that happening. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this here. And I'm going to pump in some more air again. Three, four, and five. This time, what I'm going to do is we're going to decrease the temperature. You know, you've had that soccer ball in the garage all winter long, and you go out to get it, and it's kind of flat. Well, here's why. When you put it away at the end of the summer, our particles were moving around like this, and it created just the right amount of pressure on our soccer ball. But in the wintertime, as we decrease the temperature outside, look what happens to the pressure gauge. Our particles start to slow down. They get closer together. And that's what causes our tire or our soccer ball to kind of deflate. Notice, look at those particles. They're almost hardly moving now. They've really slowed down. And of course, look at our pressure. It's really decreased. So that's kind of how pressure affects things and how temperature also affects it as well. All right, moving on again. All right, that leads us to our two main gas laws, Boyle's Law and Charles's Law. 
Boyle's law states that as the pressure increases, the volume will actually decrease, or volume increases and the pressure decreases. They're inversely proportional, meaning one goes up, the other goes down. One way to remember Boyle's law is this three-letter code called BPV. B stands for boils, P stands for pressure, V stands for volume. That's assuming that our temperature is constant. Over here we see the container. Uh, we have the lid, low pressure, large volume. But as soon as I add pressure to the lid and push down, our volume, the space, starts to decrease. That's Boyle's law. So let's think about Boyle's Law. How about we take a look at a video that's going to help us understand Boyle's Law. I think you'll get it more once you see this. Today we're talking about Boyle's Law. Boyle's, BPV, stands for Boyle's Pressure Volume at a Constant Temperature. Our, our variables here are inversely proportional, meaning if one goes up, the other goes down. So in this case, if pressure increases, our volume will decrease, or if our pressure decreases, our volume will increase. Well, let's see what happens when we do that in a basic little demonstration here. Um, I'm going to take something very simple. We're going to take a marshmallow, we're going to take a vacuum jar, and we're going to see what happens. And we'll see if Boyles is actually right, and I bet you he is. So I'm going to go ahead and set our camera down just about right there. We're going to take this big fluffy marshmallow, we're going to set it inside the middle of our uh, jar, and we're going to put the vacuum jar over the top. We'll make sure we got a good seal. Now, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to decrease the pressure, which means according to Boyle's law, our volume should increase. And we should see the volume of that marshmallow get bigger. So here we go. We'll start it off. All right, there we go. Pressure is decreasing. We can see the volume of that marshmallow continues to continue and continue to get bigger and bigger. Now, if I take the top and I change it around and I increase the pressure, that means our volume of the marshmallow will now decrease. All right, so Boyle's was right. All right, so there's Boyle's Law. Hopefully that helps you understand Boyle's Law just a little bit more. Next, let's talk about Charles's Law. Charles's Law says that as the temperature increases, our volume also increases. Or the opposite of that is if our temperature decreases, our volume decreases. We say that they're directly proportional, meaning if one goes up, the other goes up. If one goes down, the other goes down. Three-letter code to help you remember Charles's law is CTV. C stands for Charles, T stands for temperature, V stands for volume. Over here you can see low temperature, low volume. Over here, high temperature, high volume. Think of Charles's law with balloons. Uh, of course, as the temperature outside gets really cold, the volume of the balloon kind of shrinks and it gets smaller. But as we stick that same balloon in the back of our windshield or back of our car in the middle of summertime, that balloon will get bigger. Temperature increases, volume increases. Let's take a look at another video of Charles and I think this too will help you understand Charles's law. All right, today we're talking about Charles's law, Charles's law, CTV, Charles temperature volume uh, at a constant pressure. Charles' law is directly proportional, which means if the temperature goes up, the volume of the object goes up, or if the temperature goes down, the volume of the object goes down. So let's do a little demonstration here to show you how Charles works. we got some good boiling water going here. Of course, this is at constant pressure. Now, ever find a ping pong ball at home where it's accidentally indented like this? Well, of course, it doesn't really work now because you got a flat side. Don't throw it out because guess what? Charles's law will help you fix it. So you take this ball and we put it in this nice boiling water here, all right, for just a few seconds. And as it's boiling, uh, the temperature, of course, is going up inside the ball, causing the particles to move around faster and faster, which therefore causes our volume to increase. And we should have a nice ping pong ball very carefully I'll pull this out. There you go. Now we have a perfectly good ping pong ball with no dents in it at all. All right, so Charles helped us out there. So he was right. Next, let's take this balloon. And as I put this balloon in the jar, notice what happens to the balloon. It continues to expand as it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. All right, Charles says as the temperature increases, the volume of the balloon is going to increase too, and it just gets bigger and bigger. I have to keep pulling this uh, video camera back a little bit more each time uh, as the temperature goes up. All right, our volume is also increasing. So, Charles, you were right.
all right? And as the temperature uh, starts to decrease, we also see the volume of the balloon decrease as well. All right, there's Charles's law. All right, that ends our notes on gas laws.